Hi everybody, Shelly here. So today I'm gonna bring you guys along with me while I kind of sort out where I'm going with my painting Clementine. So some of you may have seen, I started painting her a few months ago and I did a nice reddish brown underpainting. I videoed myself painting her hand and then I went on after the underpainting dried and I put color on top of it and I struggled with it initially and I think I gave you guys a little bit of an update. So what's happened is I've turned her around and put her in the corner behind me. I haven't looked at the canvas for probably three months now. I haven't even looked at the reference image. In fact, I'm gonna, with you guys, turn her around and get my first impressions after these few months have gone by. I'm not even gonna pull up the reference image. I just wanna look at the painting and go through my mind and tell myself what are the pros and cons <laughs> I'm gonna make a list for what's happening what don't I like what's gotta go and maybe there's some small parts of it that I like but anyway come with me and we'll get her flipped around okay Clementine she's turned around it's the first time I've seen her in three months well what do I like? What do I don't like? I don't like all of this green. I don't know why. I felt like I needed it to have a lot of green color in it and I'm gonna put green on the cons. I don't like all the green. Maybe it needs to be less saturated. I think <laughs> the part of the problem, the reference image was taken with just a sort of overcast day. There was no dramatic lighting. There wasn't anything interesting about the lighting. It was almost kind of a flat light. When that happens, I tend to want to create a lighting situation. But I never had in my mind a clear idea of what I wanted the colors in this painting to be and what I wanted the lighting situation. Initially, I did think I wanted to see like some saturated color kind of popping up around her slightly, really close to the edges of her outline, which you could kind of see I have a little bit of that happening. I felt like that was gonna give me the idea that maybe she was a little more dreamy, like, a, like she wasn't real. She was maybe had been sitting in this field from, you know, 100 years ago, and this was sort of a ghostly type idea of her, what she would have looked like there at that time 100 years ago. That was kind of in my head. I was thinking about that. And I don't know, as I started painting it, I got really saturated. So I think the green's got to go down in saturation. I don't know, do I even want it green? What if it was a nocturne? <laughs> oh gosh. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this. Nocturne, yay or nay? Um, so if we were gonna paint her as a nocturne, then everything would need to be very muted, which I tend to gravitate lately, especially towards more muted palettes. So maybe that's part of it. I don't know, what do you guys think about that? Make it a nocturne? I'd love to see any ideas you have in the description of where I should take this painting. Hey you guys, I found my notebook with a nocturnal notes in it. I was doing a nocturnal painting a while back and it was taken from a daylight photo and turned into a nocturne. So I took all these notes yeah, I took all these notes. So let me just show, share a couple of really interesting ones with you. So in a nocturne, you wanna control the night colors by using Payne's gray or lamp black. You can't dull down the saturation of colors using their complementary. It's still gonna to be too high of a chroma for a nocturne. Uh, another uh, keynote, the sky is rarely the darkest value in a good nocturne painting. Make the shadows opaque, there is little reflected light. So the other thing you have to decide in a nocturne is do you want the moon to be um, lighting up your objects from the front or is the moon behind your subject that you're painting? So if the objects are, the lights hitting the, I'm gonna have it hit the side of Clementine. So it's a little bit of both. 
So you want to decrease the highlights in this situation. Reflections are directed away from the eye of the viewer. Distant objects are harder to see clearly, so the trees behind her won't have too much contrast with the land. The ground will appear flat and a little um, less colorful. Uh, the sky will appear darker and have more stars visible because you don't see the moon in the painting and I felt like I had said that I didn't want to show the moon in the painting I feel like it's gonna be too distracting away from the vocal point which is Clementine's face so maybe I'll just throw a little bit of stars in there um, I want it to be slightly backlit but what can happen with a backlit situation is the subject will be too much in shadow she'll be more of a silhouette and I don't want that so I'm gonna pull the light around to the side which is where it's at right now anyway so that won't require too much uh, changes in the shadow positions in the painting as it is so there's this thing called the perjinky shift and what that means is it's hard for our eyes to see color at night but the colors that we do see the best are greens. Values are often exaggerated in nocturnes. You wanna use colors that are bluish, uh, blue-green. The sky at night can set the color tone of the painting and make a night scene glow. So I wanna keep that in mind. Decrease saturation, but not to the point of gray. You don't want your nocturne to be dull. The biggest contrast is between the sky and the land, which is the same as day, just different colors. The sky can also be darker than the land at night. If the sky is lighter than the land, punch up the saturation by using blue-green colors. This will increase the luminosity in your painting, which is a definite plus. Fun fact, <laughs> the moon is 450,000 times less bright than the sun, hence, nocturne <laughs> and painters will use the moon as their light source and exaggerate its effects so these were pretty much my notes uh, there's another uh, nocturne painter he likes to group masses of darks and lights so yeah there we go so I'm gonna keep all these notes out while I'm painting and turning Clementine into a nocturne okay so the background I feel like it's just the wrong color. So the greens have got to change the color of the background. I don't like this saturated color in the dress. Initially, I had thought I was going to paint the dress she was in, in the reference, which was kind of a gray dress and it had this pattern on it. And I was thinking about pulling some of the pattern even up, out, and around her. Just getting really creative with the background and what was happening around her. Then as I was painting the gray, I felt like it was just so much gray. Then I decided that it should be yellow, and then I didn't like the yellow. And so I came over the yellow with the complementary color of this purple to kind of tone it down. But I think the dress... One of the cons is the dress color. I don't like it. Dress color needs to change. I feel like if it's going to be a muted palette, which I think a muted palette might help me, so I don't even, that can't even be a, a pro because it's not happening. Anyway, a muted palette, then the dress could be a white, it could be an off-white, maybe black. I don't know, back in like, if you look at some of the old master paintings, you did see the women wearing the black dress. And I haven't even painted in this fringe. So that was, you can see the underpainting color was that initial sort of reddish brown. But if I did it in black, that's gonna be a lot of dark right up front. And then I could have it be moonlit behind her with this backlit situation which would light up the edges of her which I wanted to do with sort of a saturated color so that could happen. It could also be daylight where it's a backlit situation. I feel like she definitely needs to be in shadow and the light needs to be behind her. One of the cons is the brightness of these flowers. I don't, flowers on the hat too bright. I've got a lot of cons, so let me see if I can come up with a, a pro. I like 
the way her face is painted. I feel like the flesh tone color is good. Now, it's good with the background color that's surrounding her, but that might change once I mute down the background, but we'll see. So we'll put that down. The face color, I like. I like the flesh in her hand. I like the way the hand's painted. Hand, okay. Arm color, good. I like the braids. I feel like those are painted nicely. I, I'm wondering, maybe there should be a little more warmth along this shadow edge of this braid, which is in more shadow. With the nocturne idea, I could punch up the contrast and make her have some more dramatic lighting. Perhaps in a nocturne with the moon coming in from over here, which you can see the lights coming in from the upper left. It's kind of hitting just underneath that hat a little bit, hitting this arm, hitting that back part of the dress. So the moon would be here coming in, which would put this in really a uh, nice dark dramatic it would help punch up some of the drama in the painting, perhaps. And these flowers would be hitting on the shadow side too, which will give me a reason to <laughs> darken those down. Maybe if, uh, maybe I don't want them to be yellow. Maybe they need to be white. You know, guys, when I say white, of course, that means we're gonna be painting it with whatever colors are used in the background, pretty much just in a higher value. But since they're on the shadow side, they could have more drama, punch up the contrast. With that being said, I might be able to, be able to punch up the contrast on the shadow side of her face. And I feel like she needs to be in some dramatic lighting. I think that's gonna help the composition. So I could darken all of this side and right through the front here. So you're just getting this sort of, you know, movement through the painting like so. And then some of this highlight from the back lit moon situation will pull you back down. So you would come in, go around. I'm thinking about the vocal point coming in. The vocal point's her face. And ideally with the vocal point, you wanna have the most contrast in that area. And I think that's happening with the black of her hat bow and her face color, that's pretty high contrast. And we could punch that up even a little bit more, but I feel like, you know, we're gonna come up here and then be pulled back around through the painting that way. Uh, the color of the hat, if, uh, I think it's okay. Maybe take down the saturation with that. I'm really leaning towards the idea of this nocturnal situation again. <laughs> I think uh, that might be, a way to go and with being in the nocturne a dark dress maybe not black maybe a dark red maroon type color some dark reddish it's not going to be saturated so really low low saturation and that's how you would paint a nocturne you wouldn't have a high degree of saturation anywhere through here pretty much i like okay here's a here's a, a pro I like the position of the trees. I think they're at a good level, the horizon line. So we'll put that in the pro. Horizon line is a pro, tree position, pro. I also like the fact that she has a little flower down here. It helps kind of tie and pull your eye around through there too. There's some flowers coming up through the front of here. I don't mind that. I think I'm neutral on it. We'll see how it goes as it develops. I'm not pro or con with these flowers. Also a nocturne might work really well. So the, the frame that I have made for this is this sort of grayish wood color and it's gonna have some black accents in the corners. And that also is something that might work well with the idea of her being in a nocturnal situation, nighttime, a nighttime situation. And I don't, I think I'm gonna show the moon. I think the moon's just gonna be suggested by the lighting situation. And with it being somewhat up here and behind her, it, it could help create some more light, light grayish, gray-green areas. 
in the background. All right, well, this is it. This is where I'm at with Clementine. And so there's my pros and cons list. I think what I'll do is mix up some paint and just work on a little bit here and there slowly and work my way th through it as if it's a nocturne. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this. Nocturne, yay or nay. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.